They tell me of a man that walked on the shores of Galilee. They tell me that he had such power he could make a blind man see. They tell me that he had great power. He made the dumb to talk. They tell me that he had such power. He made the lame to walk. Oh, this is why I'm thankful, why I pray and sing and shout. God put something way down in here, and the devil can't get that out. I'm thankful that God hurt me when I didn't know how to pray. And he answered my prayers that day. I'm thankful that Jesus saved me for time and eternity. Don Warren, I love music. I really love the spirit. Of each song. Some songs carry to heaven, others bring you to your knees, others bring you such joy till you can't keep from clapping your hands. And anything we do in our preaching, in our worship, we should find that certain spirit. The Pentecostals are the only ones that really have it. That's not playing the Baptist or the Methodist or the Presbyterian, but we're the ones that claim we have the Holy Ghost. And Holy Ghost means the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit uh, moves differently. There's times of rejoicing. There's times of weeping. There's times of prayer. There's times of deep meditation. There are times of running as fast as we can run. We have to find that, that certain anointing. Raise your hand and say that certain anointing. That move of the Spirit. See, we never stop we want everything to go exactly one way the Pentecostals do. But we're wrong in that. We, we don't lead the Spirit. I want you to watch this. You don't lead the Spirit. You're led of the Spirit. You can't change the Spirit. But the Spirit can change you. Raise your little hand and say, I want him to change me. I want to find that flow of the Spirit exactly the way the Holy Spirit wants me to move. I cannot tell <clears throat> just how I felt when Jesus came to me and spoke those kind and loving words my son I have chosen thee my eyes were filled with great big tears my heart felt warm within to know that Jesus loved a nobody like me and forgave me of all of my sins. Oh, this is why I 
I'm thankful Why I pray and sing and shout The good Lord has moved way down in here And he drove the devil out I'm thankful that God heard me when I didn't know how to pray And he answered my prayers that day I'm thankful that Jesus saved me For time and eternity Stand with me, will you? I need thee sing, children Oh, I need thee I wish somebody would sing with me Every hour I need thee Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. Raise your hand and cry it aloud, Lord, I have need of Thee. Lord, I have need that You touch me. I have need that you come by here tonight. I have many needs in my life, but if you get close to me, I'll be all right. Lord, if you'll just look at me, I'll be all right. But if you get close enough, I'll touch the hem of your garment. And when I touch the hem of your garment, your virtue will flow into me. Your virtue will flow into me when I touch you. When I touch you, Lord, it's not when I pray to you, it's not when I cry to you, but when I touch you. When I touch you, that's when I will receive your virtue. And your virtue is your holiness. And your virtue is your purity. And your virtue, Lord, is your power. And your virtue is the anointing. Your virtue is the same thing that you have. Lord, come close to me that I can touch you. Turn around and tell somebody I want to touch him. I want to touch him. Praise God. I want to have a conversation with the Lord tonight, not just one-sided talk. I talk to him lots of times, but I want him to talk to me tonight. I want to hear his voice tonight. I want to know that he's healed me. I want to know that he's moved for my loved one. I want to know that he's answered those prayers I've been praying for weeks. Raise your hand and say, I've been praying for a long time about some things. Put those hands up and say, I really have. But turn and tell somebody, I'm going to hear tonight. <coughs> I'm going to get an answer tonight. I'm not leaving this building until I get an answer from heaven. I'm not wanting a prophecy from man. I don't want some man now laying his hand on me. I want Jesus to touch me. I wish to God somebody could hear that. I'm not just acting for some man to tell me it's all right. I want Jesus to say it's all right. I want to hear from him. I've heard from man long enough. I've heard from people long enough. I've heard what this church has got to say. I've heard what the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterian, the Pentecostals, the Assemblies of God, the Church of God, the United Pentecost. I've heard what the Catholics, I've heard what the priests and the prophets, uh, I've heard what the apostles and the disciples, I've heard what the agnostics, I've heard what the believers had to say, but I want to hear what Jesus has to say. I wish to God you'd raise your hand and say, I want to hear from heaven tonight. I want to hear from heaven. I don't know whether you know it or not, but I feel something special. 
I feel something special tonight. I really feel something special. I'm not trying to encourage you. You can be there and not encourage you if you want to. I'm on cloud nine. I've already felt something special. It, it came to me a while ago when I was sitting right upon that platform. Something came by me and I knew that a hundred or more of you are going to get an answer from heaven tonight. Praise God, you're going to get something from God you're praying for. Your loved one's going to be healed. Your mother's going to be touched. Your son's going to be touched. Your daughter's going to be touched. God's going to answer your prayer. God's going to answer. The moment that you believe he will, that's when he will. Raise your hand and say, I believe it now. God's going to answer my prayer. God's going to move in my home. God's going to move where I work. God's going to move in my life. God's going to move on my husband. God's going to move on my wife. God's going to move on my children. I'm going to hear from heaven tonight. I don't want to hear from H. Richard Hall. I'm sick and tired of hearing from men. I don't want to hear some, from some television preacher. I don't want to hear from some tent preacher. I don't want to hear from some pastor. I don't want to hear from some evangelist. I want to hear it from God himself. I want to hear from God. I want God to bless you. I want to hear it tonight from God. Turn around and tell somebody he's preaching right down my alley. I want to hear it from God. I've heard it from the Baptists, and they've done a good job. I've heard it from the Methodists, and they've done a good job. I've heard it from the Presbyterians, and God knows they've done a great job. I've heard it from the Pentecostals. I've heard from the Church of God. I've heard from the Assemblies of God. I've heard from United Pentecost. I've heard from all of them yearly, but I've got news for you. If you don't mind, please get out of my way. I want to touch the hem of his garment. I I want to get close to him. I wish to God somebody could feel what I feel. I want to touch heaven tonight. I want to touch God tonight. I want to touch him with my faith. I want to touch him with my belief. I want to touch him with my soul. I want to touch him with my unbelief. I want my unbelief to get to him. I want that part of me that don't believe to get to him. I want that part that I'm pushing. I want that part that I'm always trying to bring up to four. I want it to touch him tonight. There's going to be a change in business all around. I'm going out of here tonight. Yes, sir, after 47 years preaching, I'm going out of here with something more tonight. I'm going out of here. God spoke to me on that platform and said, this is my night to move for my people in this congregation and for those that's listening to this telecast. God is going to move for you. All of hell can't keep him from moving for you. Your Lord and your God is right there with you right now. I dare you to raise your hand and say, he's with me now. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's right there with you. If I'm lying in a hospital, he's with me. If I'm in an insane asylum, he's with me. If all of the hell's against me, he's with me. If I'm up, he's with me. If I'm down, he's with me. If people love me, he's with me. If they hate me, he's with me. If they talk for me, he's with me. If they talk against me, he's with me. He never changes. Man changes, but Jesus never changes. Raise those hands and say, hallelujah. Jesus never changes. Changes. He's immutable. That means he changes not. I am the Lord God and I change not. Man changes. All you've got to do is look at each other. And five years ago, you looked a little different than you do now. Five more years, you look a little different. Twenty years ago, you look, you look different then than you do now. But I've got news for you that the promises of God are the same. The beauty of God is the same. My face may change with age. My body may change with age. You may get a little old and decrepit with age, but God is the same. Jesus is the same to a thousand generations. What he's done for one, he'll do for another, and he's going to move for me tonight. You just don't know what I know, and like I know what he's done for me. If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. What a friend we have. And Jesus, I wish you'd sing with me. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God and pray. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we 
that spirit of worship if you were not here they may do it anyhow I'd fall on my face and cry holy 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 Lord God Almighty that was and is and is to come holy angels holy heaven holy saints oh my holy prophets holy apostles holy family of God holy children of God holy black men and women holy white men and women holy brown and holy red all of them crying holy 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 my God I wish you could just understand what's going to happen in the next 36 to 48 months it's going to amaze this world this world's going to be turned upside down with a revival from heaven. See, can't you understand? Men have brought revivals. God has been good to me. And I don't mind to stand here and tell you that I have, under the anointing of God, taken revivals to communities, even to whole cities. I've gone to states and God's given revivals. I have. Oral Roberts has taken revivals. William Brannan has taken revivals. Thousands of you ministers uh, that are listening to this telecast, you've taken revivals. Church of God have taken revivals. Say, oh no, they didn't. Oh yes, they did. Pentecostal preachers have taken revivals. Assemblies of God have taken revivals. Presbyterians have taken revivals. Methodists have taken revivals. If they had not have gone and preached, there would not have been a revival. Bible. So it was up to them. Don't play the ministry down. But now that age is coming to a close. The next revival won't be a man bringing it. It'll be a revival that the Holy Spirit's going to bring. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. The next revival will be a revival that no man can stop. I may go into community, and I have. I may go into a city at some time, and I have. And they give me difficulty, putting up my tent, getting an auditorium. I've gone into places and have to spend a week or two uh, getting a lot, and then getting permits and okays from this, this little bureaucrat and this little politician. But see, there's revival coming now that the bureaucrats can't stop because it won't be a man's revival. Man won't have anything to do with it. It'll be a revival coming from heaven and nobody can stop it. It'll come into the shops where people are working. It'll come into the schools where 
they're attending and studying. It'll come into the churches. It'll come into the synagogues. It'll come into their places of employment. It'll come into their places of labor. It'll come into the hospitals. It'll come into the insane asylums. It's going to come and hit insane asylums. It's going to hit your asylum right here in this state. It, and there's two of our great ones here in this state. It's going to hit insane asylums. It's going to hit hospitals. I mean, when this spirit comes, that's going to come. I, it'll blow it'll blow your mind if I could get this across to you like I know it's going to be you wouldn't be able to understand it but it's going to come uh, just like a mighty wind from heaven and every person that's got a connection with with God I mean got that faith connection which is called the Holy Ghost got that faith connection which is called a child of God and a son of God are going to rise up out of sick beds Brady Green, they're going to rise up out of hospitals and begin to say, I'm healed and nobody touch me. I mean by the thousands. Oh yes, I'm preaching way out now. I'm preaching way out. Our hands, our hands have got to where we can't reach them all. Our hands, there's three and one half million people. There's three and one half million people right now that's dying with AIDS. We can't reach them. I mean right now. That's a report today. Three and one half million. There's thousands of the people that's going down with cancer and we can't touch them. There are those that's dying with heart troubles and we can't get to them. But you see, there's something going to happen in a moment's time. You, you, you say, I'm having a hard time believing that. You'd better believe it. This holy power is going to come from heaven like it did at Pentecost. Uh, at Pentecost, there was 120 people, about 120 people waiting for the anointing. About 120 people were waiting for this spirit the Lord said, you go back to Jerusalem. You stay there. You tear there. You stay right there. Don't you go anywhere. Don't you do, go do anything. You let your business go. Your business now is to go back to Jerusalem, and you stay there. And you tear there. And he said, there'll be, a, there'll be something come to you. The same spirit that I have will come to you. And it did come. On the day of Pentecost, about 120 received that spirit. That was the promise of God. I'm standing here telling you tonight that man has received the glory long enough. This Holy Ghost is going to get the glory. You watch it. You'll be in hard places. I'm prophesying to you now. Remember this. Why don't you write it down? I'm talking about you. You and you and you. Oh, you'll sit there and won't do it, but you'll need it. You'll need it. You can't get something except you accept it. You cannot receive something except you accept it. I may stand here and tell you, but if you don't accept it, if you don't act on it, it won't be yours. But if you'll act on it right now, when you get in that hard place next week, when you get in that hard place a month from now, when you get in that hard place and that heart of yours start acting up, you get in that hard place and that sickness hits you, you get in that hard place in a, a courtroom, you get in that hard place, you write this thing down and say, God's going to move for me when I get there. God's going to make a way. He's going to open up the doors and I'm going to be set free from sickness and from disease and from the power of the enemy. I wish somebody could feel what I feel. Mr. Hart you're prophesying way out there where no man has ever prophesied. Yes, sir, I've been preaching for a long time. There's a height that no man has reached. There's a faith that no man's got to yet. There's a place in God. There's a mountain that no man's climbed. Paul and others climbed high places, and the apostles climbed in high places. The, the other apostle went with Jesus up into the mountains, and they saw the things that God spoke to Moses, and they saw Moses standing there and they saw Elijah standing there and they saw Jesus standing there they were high upon that mountain and then Moses went high upon a mountain and then the other prophets and apostles went high on mountains but there's a mountain that no man has got to the top of yet and I've got news for you I'm preaching about that mountain I dare somebody to jump to your feet and say I'm going to climb it I'm going to stand where no man's ever stood I'm going to walk where no man's ever walked I'm I'm going to get closer to them than any man's ever gotten. I dare you to raise your hand and say, he's talking to me. I'm going to get close to him. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I'm going to weep and I'm going to howl between the porch and the altar 
until I until I hear from heaven. I'm going to touch his garment. I'm going to get his garment. I'm going to, I'm not only going to see that purple garment they claim that he wore. I'm going to I'm going to get it, a fold of it in my hands. I'm not going to turn him loose. I'm going to cry, He's my Lord. He's my God, and I'll not let him go until he blesses me. My God, don't somebody feel this anointing? If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. I'm going to get it, and all of hell can't stop me. I'm going to reach it, and no demons can stop me. I'm going to reach it, and no man's going to stop me. There's no power that can stop me. A doubt comes my way, and I'll run through it. Hateful spirits come, and I'll go through it. Preachers that despise me will come, but I'll pack, cast them aside and say, leave me alone and turn me loose. I want to get to him. I've got to get to Jesus. Praise God, if I had time, I'd shout. Why don't somebody lift those hands and magnify the Lord? You may be seated. This is my moment. Mine. Write that down on a piece of paper. This is my moment. Mine. And then sign it. Nothing no good till you sign it. No way. Is it God's will to heal you? Give me a piece of paper. Is it God's will? Is it God's will to open your blinded eyes? Is it God's will to unstop your deaf ears? Talk to me, children. I'm preaching to you individually. I'm not preaching to the congregation. I'm preaching to the individual. Is it God's will to save your children? Is it God's will to save your husband? Yes. Is it God's will to save your wife? Yes. Is it God's will to give you employment? Yes. Is it God's will for you to prosper? Yes. My Lord and my God, there's a few people all can talk about prospering. My God, it's God's will that I be in health. It's God's will that I be full of joy. It's God's will that I be full of peace. It's God's will that I have power over demons. It's God's will that I don't have to call on a preacher to come and help me. It's God's will for me to have it. It's God's will. I'm God's child. I'm, inher I'm an inheritor. I don't have to call on my big brother or somebody around about. I can say it's mine. It's mine. It's in the Bible. It belongs to me. If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. I want you to watch this. May I borrow your book? I want you to watch this, please. Watch it closely. Is this the Bible? All right. Is, is this, this expression I'm getting ready to make. After I make it, if it's the Bible, turn around and cry aloud. That's the word. Jesus said, Ask what you will and it shall be done unto you I don't hear anybody cry <laughs> Jesus said ask what you will what you will what you will what you will, what you will, I'm picking different ones out, what you will, what you will, ask, just ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Turn around and tell somebody if that's the word. Cry it aloud. Will the word fail? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Oh, I feel this thing going all the way through this flesh, much less my soul. Ask what you will. I don't care if it's something to happen in a state, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, California, 
over in Bombay, over in Asia, Africa, he said, you ask, and it shall be done. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to do some asking tonight. He said it. He said it. And he said of himself that I am the way, didn't he? And not only that, he said, I am the truth. If he said he was the truth, and he said, you ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, I ask you a question. Are you like me? I've asked a lot of things, and it didn't happen. 